Some time ago, I made a video on safety <coughs> on the streets and how to keep yourself safe, uh, which is sometimes difficult because getting from one side to another on a street uh, can be difficult. It depends on if it's a manual wheelchair or slower power wheelchair. Um, you know, sometimes we have to get off the sidewalk and kind of go around obstacles, and that puts us in danger. So what do you do? And um, I put a lot of examples, and I'll put them here, but I spoke about um, different things that counties can test in terms of the painting on uh, the... Uh, near the sidewalks or the turns on the sidewalks or um, the crosswalks and what to put, you know, what kind of painting uh, would help us cross sidewalks and cross from one, from one corner to another uh, and prevent these issues of the time running out and for us to get to the other side. Um, for us to have to get off the sidewalk and go around an obstacle because the sidewalks are in bad shape. Um, it, it was all of that. So, and I'll be putting up <coughs> some examples of what I posted on that previous uh, video. That video, parts of it, was used in a county meeting uh, to show the county things that they could do at low price it wouldn't break their piggy bank, but it would give us more safety to be able to get off the sidewalk and cross to the other side without being hit. So, you know, it's kind of like the, and we might need it to request, you know, there's a lane for bikes and possibly uh, we'll need a, a lane for wheelchair users there are signs for neighborhoods and other areas that have a, a wheelchair on it, and that indicates that there's wheelchairs in the area, so to slow down and to be careful, be watchful. Um, recently in the news, there was this gal who, who got hit by this driver twice because they, they hit her once and then they hit her again. <laughs> What that was about, I have no idea. But um, some people live in very busy areas, and those sidewalks and the crosswalks and the lights, you know, need to be adjusted to help people, pedestrians and wheelchair users. Although wheelchair users are known as pedestrians, and they kind of lump us in there. Um, but they need to have a better understanding of wheelchair users and our struggles and how many times we are hit or killed uh, on the roads and what can we do. And there's quite a few things that we can do. You know, give more time for the pedestrians to cross the street, uh, adjust those timers a little bit more so we can get across without being hit, uh, put some safety zones around those corners so we can get off the sidewalk and go around or get off the sidewalk and cross the street without being hit by a car who's making a right-hand turn. In a lot of states and a lot of countries, you can make a right-hand turn on red. And maybe in the neighborhoods and near areas where there are wheelchair users, to put a safety zone for us to get off the sidewalk without getting hit and then <laughs> have a signs around that say wheelchair users around and that that doesn't cost much that's you know painting a stupid sign and putting it up <laughs> people <laughs> and we have to realize here in the United States that each county has a budget and we have to jump the gun as fast as we can to uh, get our, squeeze ourselves in to request these things uh, and, and be included in the budget. Now, you know, when the counties or the state asks for federal funds, now 
you know, these projects, these road projects have to go back to the feds for them to review it, and they will make sure that there are allowances for people with disabilities. So that is, you know, really crucial uh, for if they're going to do a project in a neighborhood or a project, you know, going in from the neighborhood into the city, that there are allowances for people with disabilities, for people in wheelchairs, for pedestrians to cross safely. So, and if, if, it is, if there isn't any allowance in there for people with disabilities, it does not get approved. <laughs> it gets sent back to the county or to the state to redo it. So um, I, I'm gonna trust in that, uh, uh, that they will do that, you know, when they're giving out funds to states to improve their roads in the neighborhoods or neighborhood into city or city into neighborhood. Um, so that's really crucial. But I think there are many different things that they can do to, to help us and reduce the mortality rate. I mean, this is not something that we, at a whim, are asking for. This is to prevent mortality, to reduce or eliminate that mortality rate that we suffer when we are on the streets or we have to get off the sidewalk or we're going around an obstacle because the sidewalks are in such bad shape. And, you know, the, the lights are not programmed <coughs> correctly to give us and, and the pedestrians who are mobile enough time to get across the street without being hit. So uh, and I get it. It's, it's budget. It's money. It's a little bit of politics there, too. Um, who you vote for, who's on there, who's not on the board um, to decide financially how much they can help us in XYZ zone, XYZ area, XYZ neighborhood. I don't care what the XYZ is, but they really do have to pause for a minute and, and look at those statistics of how many times a pedestrian is hit and killed because the, the lights are not programmed correctly. There's not enough safety zone for us for regular mobile pedestrians and wheelchair pedestrians. So we have to agree that there are some changes that are needed for these roads um, and sidewalks, whatever you want to call it. But, you know, to get to a bus stop, to get off the bus and get to my home without being hit <laughs> more than once or killed. So. Uh, I will also put up those statistics at the end of the video so they can take a look at that. Take a look at the designs that I'm posting up here. Take a look at the statistics of how many times we are hit, we are killed uh, for being out in the streets, for trying to do what we need to do, which is to get home, which is to go to work get groceries. We're not doing anything <laughs> extra. We're doing the minimal that we need to do um, as people in wheelchairs. So we have to do something, and we, it needs to be smart. It needs to be well invested, and I agree. But you have to start recognizing that there are people out there who are blind, people out there who are deaf, people out there with wheelchairs, and all of these things on sidewalks and roads are crucial, are important for your community, your county, your state. Um, so it's accessibility, folks, at a minimal. <laughs> and I'm going to put up the cost of also of signs. Um, what, what, is, what does it cost in a county on average to make the colors brighter, paint a, a, a safety zone. How much does that cost? Which is probably not much. But I know everybody's pushing for their area, for their uh, little piece of money. But we're talking deaths here. We're talking about serious accidents. Uh, so we want to stand up as a state, uh, county, and feel proud that we have worked on 
reducing um, these deaths of mobile pedestrians and pedestrians who are blind, pedestrians who are in wheelchairs, uh, pedestrians who are deaf because as a deaf person, they don't hear anything around them. They have to, you know, have their head on a swivel. So they also need, you know, safety on those roads in which we have to cross the street, in which we have to be on the sidewalk. We don't want to get off the sidewalk. It's not that we're being sloppy. It's especially when we're in wheelchairs, we don't want to bust our wheelchairs up just because there's a whole bunch of potholes and cracks in the sidewalks. So we have to get real, folks. And we always have to put a, a, a little lump of money aside and say, okay, we're going to focus on the east side. We're going to focus on the north side. We're going to focus this year on the south side. Whatever it might be to improve the, the crosswalks, the sidewalks, put signs up you know, where you know there's going to be wheelchairs present so that the traffic slows down. You know, and you can put on the sidewalk, you know, on the sign, a big wheelchair and say, slow down, wheelchairs present. You know, how, how difficult is that? How much money are you going to lose on that? Nothing, absolutely nothing. And it's going it, to, you know, it's going to cost you a little bit money, but I'll put up those costs so you can put that money always aside and start, start, start working on it. Start working on it, folks, because we're calling your attention, and it's you're, you're making all kinds of obstacles for us to request this. And we're the people with disabilities who some of us can't write anymore. Some of us have difficulty writing, and uh, some of us have difficulty even getting to your office if it's a matter of showing up to these meetings. Uh, we might need an advocate to go for us. So, so let's think about this. Let's put up a form in which we can fill it out in regards to our requests. And then you can count up the requests of what areas do you have more requests for improvement of sidewalks, improvement of, of uh, crosswalks, and improvement of lights so we can cross safely. I would think that you would be able to stand up proud uh, to say we have reduced to a minimal or to zero the deaths of pedestrians in our state, that people can cross the sidewalks and the corners safely. So to, to get real here, I wanted to put a list of how much this would cost approximately. So I'm gonna put a list here and you can feel free to stop the video so you can kind of look at page one and page two. Um, <coughs> So you have an idea of how much this costs the county or the state uh, to do this. And if they get federal funds, you know, they have to put in some, some recourse for people with disabilities uh, slash pedestrians. So let me put that up first, and then I will put up some designs uh, of sidewalks that are out there right now that the drivers would understand and I think the rule of three feet distance from the crosswalks would be important. So let me go do that. Okay, as before, here are some designs of crosswalks that um, have their cost, of course, um, but it could cost about $1,200 to do. It is cheaper to do brick, it seems, a little bit cheaper, maybe by $100, $200, it's cheaper to do a brick-type crosswalk. Um, that was a little surprising in, in the cost, and I, I put up already the uh, chart of possible costs or average costs of doing one one or the other. Um, but it it's really important, folks, to be aware how much it costs, how much, you know, if you did different designs, um, how much that would cost. And I think the three-foot rule is really important to establish throughout the United States that those cars, you know, if people are using the crosswalk, 
it's a striped crosswalk where the pedestrians have the right of way that the cars have to stop three feet before the crosswalk. Because I've had cars stopping right in the middle of the crosswalk <laughs> and I'm trying to get around the car, you know, without getting hit by the other side of the traffic. So um, <clears throat> they have been very courteous and they have backed up, which is good. But I think to have a line there where the cars know, okay, this is where I need to stop, I shouldn't go any further, um, is helpful for us. So we don't have to go around and, and take the risk of ending up going into the other uh, traffic going the other way. So it's, it's some of that. Uh, I like the design uh, where you have uh, <coughs> some cement, a cement block where the car has to go around. They can't, they can't go close to the, the corner. So that is, a, to me, a, a, safety, uh, a safety thing that, that I like, that um, right on the corner there, there's another cement uh, barrier there, uh, to call it that. And so that, uh, and you'll see it up here, so that the car has to go around that barrier and so it, it protects the pedestrians, it protects the wheelchair users, it protects the people who are blind. So uh, I think to add those things is, is crucial. I mean, what state, what county wouldn't want to protect their pedestrians? <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> Don't you get points for that? <laughs> the people would love you. So, you know, you, you got to think these things through in which... <clears throat> You know, you're thinking of the safety of the pedestrian. We, so we have a lot of drivers these days. A lot of people are driving and they're on the roads and they're in a hurry. Um, and, and we have to kind of slow those cars down somehow and educate them a little bit, you know, put up some signs, warnings that if they do this or that, you know, there, there could be some fines. And... Uh, <laughs> Yesterday, I was just going to the lab, and this car was going at least 70 in a 35-mile-per-hour zone and went right through the red light. Like, doesn't matter. Who cares? You know, and he could have taken out some people. <laughs> that was just awful. Just to see a person, I got the chills when I saw that. At least he was going 70 miles per hour and just went through the red light, like, who cares, you know? And he could have killed someone, or a few people, I don't know. It's, it's nuts, it really is. So we, we really have to figure this out in terms of educating the drivers, putting more limitations on them if they're gonna act like this. So, um, so you saw the numbers of the costs uh, to put up a street sign for wheelchair traffic in the area or in the zone uh, in this area, that costs about $100, $150 to put up a sign like that. So it's, it's not a deal breaker. It's not going to break the piggy bank either. But if you put a pot of money aside to start adding some of those um, signs that would help us because then the drivers would see it say oh there's wheelchair users in the area so I'm going to slow down um, <clears throat> or make sure that I'm aware that they're around and so I need to you know keep my foot <laughs> a little off the gas so and be aware be looking around for them so I think that also would be helpful um, and, you know, state the, the, the fines and, and what could happen, you know, on some signs so that when the drivers are stopped and waiting for pedestrians to cross, they can see the sign. If you violate, you know, these rules, you know, it's either a fine or, you know, so many points off your driver's license. And I think that's going to trigger something for some people. So... We have to do something to protect the pedestrians, is what I'm saying, and wheelchair users, because we're slower, and um, we need a few more seconds to get across the street. Now, 
in my next wheelchair when I have to update it or change it, um, I'm definitely going to ask for more speed on it so I can get across in a safe manner. So, so here are all the designs, and I'm hoping I'm making a call to all states to consider putting up more signs that say wheelchair uh, activity in this area or wheelchair traffic in this area uh, so that people will slow down. They're aware. They're, you know, looking for us, looking out for us so that we can reduce the amount of deaths and accidents that happen with wheelchair users. I don't think that's very hard. I think that a pot of money has to be set aside to do this, no doubt, or to raise funds to do something like this. Um, <clears throat> so either way, we're asking for help in any state, any county that uh, will look at different designs and to improve you know, the crosswalks for pedestrians and wheelchair users and for those who are blind uh, will help us. <clears throat> so I'm putting it out there, make it a little bit easier for us to request those funds, those changes, uh, let us know in what months are the best months to request these things. I realize that in the middle of the fiscal year is not the best, they're probably at the beginning so um, of the fiscal year, so you know, or before the fiscal year starts, that you know, okay, we have these requests from pedestrians because the crosswalks need updating and we need signs, we need more signs for wheelchair users, so we need to set aside some money for that. So um, make it easier for us, for those who have dis disabilities, to be able to request these things on time and um, in a clear manner that works for you uh, so you can add that into the budget. All right, folks, that is all. Uh, because this is before the national elections in the United States, I'm going to remind you, uh, don't forget to vote. I will put a link down in the description box so you can go and check and make sure your name is uh, subscribed and you're ready to go and vote either in person or an absentee ballot. Uh, so and go ahead of time or have it delivered to your home and, and vote. I think this year is, is very important. That also influences the, the federal budgets. So you want to think about um, who you're going to vote for in a, in a careful manner. Uh, so think about it, and I will put the links down below so you can find it easier. All right, sign up to vote, and I will see you in the next video.